Okay, so now we should be pretty comfortable with how clips function within Ableton Live. Again, clips are basically the, uh, the backbone, the main building blocks, sort of the key to everything in Live. So we looked at audio clips. We took a brief glimpse at MIDI clips. Let's revisit MIDI clips, and better yet, let's grab a different MIDI instrument, one that you're probably gonna be using quite a bit, which is the drum rack. As you can see, I'm navigating over to the browser here, and in the categories, we have our instruments, and in the instruments category, there is the drum rack instrument. Now, by default, if you take a drum rack and you drop it onto a track, obviously it's a MIDI instrument, so that's supposed to go on a MIDI track. If I take the drum rack, click and hold, and drag this over here, what you're gonna notice is that it's blank. There's no sounds in this drum rack at all. Now, before we grab a drum rack with some sounds in it, I wanna just explain exactly what we're looking at here. Right now, we can see 16 empty chains in the drum rack. And when I say a chain, a chain can be a sound in a series of effects or an instrument in a series of effects. So it's not just one sample. You can have that sample and delay and reverb and whatever else you want. So we can see 16 chains and each chain is associated with a MIDI note. So for instance, if we dropped a sample into this first slot here, we'd have to press the note equivalent of C1 on our MIDI keyboard in order to trigger this chain, that sound and whatever effects are there. So keep this in mind. We wanna find a drum rack kit that already has some sounds loaded into it. Now, another thing I'll point out before we actually grab a proper kit, we only see 16 chains here, but this is 16 out of a possible 128 chains. If we look over here, we see this little black box and we see an overview of every single chain, available chain slot in the drum rack. So if I click down here, you notice the notes change because now I have to hit E minus two to trigger this chain. Whereas up here, I'd have to trigger C1 to trigger what looks like the same chain or the same slot. So we can have up to 128 individual sounds in the drum rack and you can actually place even more depending on how you layer them. But before we get into all that, we want to load a preset drum rack kit. Now with all the other MIDI instruments, if I wanna load a preset, if I click on this arrow next to the instrument, I can find all types of categories for presets. The drum rack works a little bit differently. If I click here, I have some preset drum racks, but these are actually drum racks that I made myself. These are not the drum rack uh, kits that come with Ableton Live. If you've installed some drum rack kits, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to your drums here. And in the drums, let me just go ahead and scroll back up to the top. When we're looking at the different types of sounds in here, uh, anything that says kit is gonna give us a full kit of drum sounds. Maybe not 128 sounds, but generally it'll be at least the 16 to fill in uh, the visible chains here. So I see a few kits, acoustified kit. I'm gonna scroll down and there's a particular kit that I want to load, one of my favorite. So I'm looking for drum racks uh, that start with the word kit. So he's starting here, kit 606, kit 707, kit 808. Now these kits uh, are made to emulate classic drum machines. The TR-808 was one of the most uh, classic and iconic drum machines in terms of the sound that it created. And that's the one that I wanna use. So I'm gonna grab the 808 Classic, kit 808 Classic, click hold, and I'm gonna drop this onto track one. And now I have a drum rack and I have some sounds in my drum rack. And again, I'm using my computer keyboard right now in order to uh, play this like a MIDI instrument. I'm gonna arm the track. Now, if I press A, I'm pressing A on my computer keyboard and it happens to be triggering the proper note. But there might be a situation you run into where this isn't the case and we're gonna talk about how to fix that uh, and good ways to utilize the computer keyboard. But for now, I know that if I press A on my keyboard, right now it's triggering C1. Now, by default, if you try to do the same thing, if you press A on your computer keyboard, you might see a yellow flashing light over here and not actually hear a sound. So again, these are all the uh, possible chains in the drum rack, and each chain is associated with a note. And by default, the computer keyboard, the A key triggers C3, not C1. Most of the drum rack kits start at C1, not C3. So if you wanna use your computer keyboard to play this, you're gonna to have to transpose it down by two octaves. And you can use the Z key, 
Now I've gone down one octave. I'm gonna hit Z again. And there we go. All right, so now I'm playing the right note. Okay. Now before we start really uh, creating a drum beat, I wanna make it clear what we have here with the drum rack. Ableton Live has several different rack devices that have the name rack in the title. And a rack is essentially a container device. It can contain a lot of other devices. And as we know by now, a device is simply a instrument um, or an effect. All those things are labeled as devices in Ableton Live. So a drum rack doesn't have to just have samples. You could actually put different MIDI instruments into each one of these chains uh, and then add effects. Now, if we wanna see what the uh, sound is being generated by, we can simply double click on one of these chain slots. And now I can see this is the device that's inside of that particular chain. This device here, this is the simpler instrument. And this simpler instrument is playing back an 808 kit. Now we can also see the devices in the drum rack uh, by going over here. If we look on the left hand side, we have three buttons here and these buttons will show and hide aspects of the drum rack. So again, there's lots of show and hide buttons all throughout Ableton Live. This button here, this is our device button. This will show and hide all the nestled devices in the drum rack. So I turn that off, that device view disappears. I hit this again, and now I can see the device inside of this chain slot. If I hit this one, I see the device for the rim shot. Pretty much all of these are being generated uh, from a simpler instrument that's nestled within the drum rack. So again, our drum rack is a container. Now, a few other things I wanna point out before we move on. We have this top button here. If we go back to the left-hand side, let me go ahead and hide our device. This top button, this shows and hides the macro knobs. Macro knobs are extremely useful because these knobs can be mapped to multiple parameters within the rack. Uh, and that way we can change a bunch of different things by just twisting one knob, or we can make it so that the most important parameters are visible here without us opening up the device view. So we can see there's a kick tone, snare tone, tom's tone, tom's decay, tom's tune, cymbal's decay. So these are all extremely useful parameters and we'll start playing around with these after we program a little drum beat, all right? But again, we have our macro knobs. This is our device button here. And in between those is a button that shows the chains list. Now, like I said, each one of these individual slots holds a chain. Okay, a device chain. So it can be, again, an instrument and any number of effects can all live on each individual chain. So when you hit this button, this brings up the chain list. Now, when you bring up the chain list, there's a bunch of buttons that show up down here. You have your IO for input and output, S for sends and R for returns. I'm not gonna dive into that right now, but the most important thing to know, because uh, we will revisit this later, is the drum rack has its own internal mixer. You can also route sounds differently when you're using the drum rack. And this leads to some very interesting possibilities. But if you look, each chain in the drum rack has its individual volume, can be panned, can be muted, can be soloed. And this circular button with the arrows is a hot swap button. Now with the chains list, you actually have a different layout where you can see this chain list, but make it look more like tracks. If we go up to the header for this drum rack track, we see there's a little arrow right here. And if I click on this, go ahead and collapse my browser. Now we can see all of the chains within the drum rack are expanded and they all look like their own little tracks. So basically we're just seeing the chains list in a more familiar view, okay? We can, again, pan, mute, solo, and adjust the volume of all the individual chains. So whatever layout works for you, you can either use the chain list down here or we can use this expanded view of the drum rack up here. All right, so now we're about ready to start using the drum rack and start creating a little drum beat. 